Hey guys, good morning. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. I want to show you something. Actually, I want to talk to you about something here. Uh, interference motors. When you break a timing belt or break a timing chain, if it's an interference motor, you bend the valve, right? Well, not necessarily. So what I have here is a Mitsubishi piece of garbage. As you can see, it's running. So it got towed to me from another shop. The other shop had told the customer that, well, your timing belt broke, it's an interference motor, you need an engine. So he had called me and I said, well, not necessarily. Uh, a lot of times what happens is if it broke on startup, there's a very good chance that, no, it never contacted the valves. Um, just what I've seen over time. Anyway, sure enough, I get it in the shop and I told him, I said, well, I'm going to have to throw a timing belt on it. Let's try that first. Uh, if it doesn't work, then yeah, you're going to need a motor. And if you need a motor, we're going to put a used one in. We're going to use a timing belt anyway. So he agreed to it. And so I pull it inside, put the belt on. Sure enough, it starts. Uh, it runs okay. So there you go. You don't necessarily need a motor if you break a timing belt. You just, you got to pay attention. If it broke while he was on the highway, you know, going 70 miles an hour or something, and the thing was at, you know, 3,000 RPM or whatever, 2,000 RPM, yeah, pretty good chance it's going to bend some valves. But this broke on startup, so there we go. The chance of it breaking on, uh, chance of it bending valves on startup is kind of limited. I'd say you got a 60% chance of it being okay. So anyway, that's it for today. Just thought I'd share that with you. Um, and that's it. All right, you guys have a great day. Keep wrenching.